So, welcome to the 1212 Medieval Kingdoms mod for Total War Attila. Now, I don't know whether this will be the first or the second one of these battles that I'm going to be showing, but I'm recording both of them at near enough the same time, so I'm not really sure. I think this one will probably be the second, though, so I think I'll probably hold off on an overall explanation of 1212. I think uh, we'll be seeing the other battle first anyway, uh, but this is going to probably be the second in this series of two. And, you know, 1212, as I said in the last battle, if that one does indeed come out first, I've always been a little bit more iffy on Attila's controls, uh, sort of in comparison to some other multi... well, Attila's mechanics, I should say, rather next to some of the other Total War games, like, the controls are obviously just the same, but, you know, overall, I've always felt Attila to be a little bit more... I don't know, I, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but Attila... It's functional, but it's not quite as favourable to me as something like, obviously, Medieval 2, even if Medieval 2 is getting a little bit archaic at this point. Uh, Reforged is definitely, you know, basically pushing as far as Medieval 2 can go. There really is no... there's not a lot more that Medieval 2 can give. Uh, Warhammer 2 is also quite mechanically sound as well. I enjoy playing that, but obviously it's a very different kind of game to something like this. Uh, but considering Medieval 3 is probably extremely unlikely to happen in the near future, uh, this 1212 mod is as close and as good as it is going to get, and certainly one area in which they uh, knock it out of the park is with their unit models. As you can see here, my Portuguese king, uh, he, that, that is the king model as well. He, a lot of the king models in this game actually have sort of their own crowns and such, but uh, Portuguese king instead has gone for a very fetching plume, in addition to a heart-shaped shield as well. Uh, but obviously, you know, None of these battles are historically accurate, or like historically historical battles per se, uh, but they are plausible. Um, the last battle, for example, you probably would have seen would have been between Bohemia and Hungary, and this one is going to be between the Spanish Kingdom of Castile and obviously the King, the Kingdom of Portugal. Obviously, they tussled a few times on Iberia, uh, but ultimately Iberia was never united. Portugal did keep their independence. We shall see. If that is going to be true this time, obviously I am playing as Portugal. Uh, we'll go through my army first of all as well, and we start off with my cavalry, which cavalry, especially in a late period battle like this, both of the battles I'm going to be showing are going to be almost entirely comprised of late period units. Anything that isn't late period is going to be fodder at best. Late period cavalry, late period European cavalry is extremely powerful uh, and will often decide fights. You know, obviously infantry can be very strong as well, sort of the most heavily armoured infantry and other such units as well, but cavalry in particular with how devastating their charge can be. If you lose the cavalry fight too heavily, you can often find yourself on the end of a real beating, as we found out when we were playing several of these battles. Uh, so that's my king's bodyguard, as we've already seen, and then I also have several units of the mounted Portuguese nobles, which are essentially the same unit, obviously not a bodyguard though. Again, I do like the details on all the shields, the fact that all the unit models have got something a little bit different about them. Uh, and I believe I have four units of the... actually five units of the uh, of the Portuguese uh, mounted Portuguese nobles and then the king's bodyguard making up the sixth unit of shock cab. I also have got well, two units of the Portuguese cavalry which are classed as melee cav. Uh, melee cav in this mod I've noticed is not all that impressive. It doesn't seem to do huge amounts in melee with other cavalry. Generally speaking shock cavalry will do you know better than the most of the time just because they're they've got better equipment, better armor and the like but uh, melee cavalry is also substantially cheaper, and it can also be used to break up charges, which was the primary reason why I only brought two units of them, so I could send them out in front and try and absorb a little bit of the charge. Uh, but in comparison to my opponent, I kind of expected Spain to have a little bit of a cav advantage over Port Portugal, so I did bring a few more ranged units and a little bit more in terms of infantry numbers. Now I've got a couple of units of these municipal archers here on the front, which are you know, tier 1, which means they're technically an early period archer. Uh, but I didn't really expect them to be anything other than fodder anyway, and even the early period archers at this point in the mod's development still have the same missile damage. You know, all the archers have got a uniform missile damage at this point in time. There are other factors like fire rate, you know, how good the archers are in melee as well. Uh, it's actually a pretty big deal, you know, a lot of the late period crossbows and archers can actually act as very strong infantry. But these guys obviously certainly will not, you know, they are here to be a nuisance, you know, at best. And then I have, just counting them up here, six units here of the late period. I've got the uh, Q and uh, W keys the other way around on Medieval 2, so I keep pressing the wrong one. Uh, but I have uh, five units of the late period spearmen. Now, 
they're not going to be quite as good as stuff like late period Parvis spears, which are a little bit more expensive, a little bit tougher. Uh, but overall, I do like having spears on the front line. It's going to make it so cavalry is certainly not going to want to charge frontally into your armies, which can be very devastating in this mod. You really need to be careful of it. But also the fact you can put them into shield wall and they will hold for a pretty long time. They will need support if they're going to win against sort of more aggressive late period infantry. But they will take quite a long time to chew through when they're in formation, which is why I went for so many of these guys. And obviously they will make a solid front line for me, and also will give me, almost certainly give me the infantry advantage in terms of numbers, six units of them in fact. Uh, just back here, uh, for the memes more than anything, I got some slingers, early period slingers. Uh, you know, they can actually do some damage to be fair if you park them behind your lines, but obviously again, they can be quite a tempting target for cavalry because you can obviously bowl them over very, very quickly. And if they're charging into my slingers, very cheap early period slingers, they're not going to be recharging my, my sort of more effective infantry in the fight. Uh, and any kills they pick up will be a bonus, obviously they were incredibly cheap. Uh, back here, for crying out loud, I really need to change that around. Uh, but I have four units of the late period halberdiers as well. Now the halberdiers obviously going to be very good at holding the line. Uh, will do substantially more damage as well than the spearmen, but also I was expecting a lot of Spanish cavalry, which I was certainly right to, because they outnumbered me in terms of... Actually, I think we've got the same amount of cavalry, but their quality of cav is higher than mine, so I certainly need to play this a little bit more carefully. Uh, the halberdiers, however, will be on the front line attempting to hold down the fort. And then back here, I also have a couple of units of the late period crossbowmen. Again, unlike quite a lot of the other units like Parvis crossbows, I also had access to mercenary Genoese crossbows, which are basically the same thing. Uh, but I decided not to bring them because they were a little bit more expensive. I wanted to save a little bit of money. Uh, they are not quite as strong, obviously, just these basic late period Portuguese crossbowmen. Uh, but they will still do the same amount of damage, obviously a lot of stopping power in crossbows. And they won't be completely useless in melee because they've got some of that late period armour, uh, which they are obviously a little bit lighter on lighter on armour than my dedicated melee infantry units, but they will still be able to do a fairly decent job, and for the most part I'm going to be trying to get them into positions where they can start affecting the cav fights if I can. And then, as we break out wide, on, bo on both my flanks actually I've got a couple of units of these guys which are my personal favourite unit that I've brought actually, some dismounted Portuguese nobles, so again, a lot of them wielding two-handers, a lot of them wielding pole axes actually, a few of them wielding long swords as well. Actually, they've got bare hands wielding that long sword. That's going to hurt. Uh, but very, very strong. Obviously, they've got a bonus against cavalry as well as a polearm unit. So again, the Spanish cavalry is certainly not going to want to get mixed up with this particular unit. But they will also be very strong in the melee fight as well. So if the Spanish cavalry is too passive against my defensive formation here, I will be able to roll up the Spanish infantry as they move forwards. Uh, but that's going to be it for my army as we move across the field into Steel Can's army, who is my opponent in the last battle as well. We'll get into the Spanish army. So we'll go out wide and have a look at his cavalry first of all, actually. So we have several units of Caballeros. Again, I'm, I'm very sorry if I pronounce any of these names wrong. 12 12 is a real challenge for this. Uh, but heavy shock cavalry, late period shock cavalry as well. As you can see from the armor, obviously they are going to be very similar in terms of quality to my mounted Portuguese nobles. Uh, although, yeah, it's, the Caballeros actually are probably very similar to the mounted Portuguese nobles. But it's another cavalry unit that the Spanish have which kind of push their unit quality a little bit higher on horseback, as you might expect. Over here, meanwhile, again, more polearm units supporting his cavalry. So we've got the Monteros de Espinosa, uh, which are a polearm unit, which uh, they are not holding it in the same... I yeah, I think looking at them, actually, they are halberdier type units, so they will be able to go into a sort of phalanx formation, just like my late period halberdiers. Uh, a little bit different in terms of their functionality to a sort of polearm two-hander unit, uh, all of them will have an anti-cavalry bonus, of course, but, you know, obviously a phalanx unit, it, the mechanics are different to Medieval 2, and honestly I'm still getting a little bit more used to it. You know, 12-12 is not something I've played a huge amount of, nor is Attila in a multiplayer environment, so... Uh, but even so, uh, this is definitely going to be the sort of thing. He's obviously put these guys out on the flank so that he can push them up with the cavalry to try and give him even more of a leg up in terms of the cab fight. Having a look over here, we've got some more Monteros, so that's again just more spears. Again, two crossbows over here, so I do have the ranged advantage. I've brought three ranged units as opposed to just two, uh, but he has Parvis crossbows. So his crossbows are of higher quality than mine, but he would have also spent more on them. Uh, so potentially I can try and overwhelm him with ranged fire, but this also means that with this sort of setup, uh, it's pretty much a given that he's going to be a little bit more aggressive. I have the ranged advantage on him, he has the cav advantage, so he's going to want to try and crush my flanks and then just roll into my... Uh, roll into the back of my infantry and my archers. Uh, he's got some late period pikemen as well, obviously going right down the middle. Uh, pikes obviously a little bit, uh, they do their killing a little bit more slowly than halberdiers, but generally speaking across the total war games they can be viewed as a little bit of a safer choice, because uh, once they're in formation they will pretty happily stay in melee for quite some time. 
maybe a little bit less so if they are if they are unsupported. There's a little bit more of an opportunity there. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of Spanish infantry nearby that can come to their aid if need be. And then over here we've got some Spanish foot order knights late period, which again, overall in terms of functionality, are going to be extremely similar to uh, my dismounted Portuguese nobles. They even have very similar uh, weaponry. Obviously, a lot of sort of hal halberds over here, pole axes, again, two-handed swords. Uh, this guy over here looks pretty fabulous with his golden armor. <laughs> Um, but yeah, obviously several units of them, and also some dismounted caballeros as well. Uh, which overall, I'm pretty sure the Spanish foot order knights are stronger than the caballeros, but overall, similar functionalities. Speaking of which, let's see how the Spanish king is riding into battle, and I believe this is him. Indeed it is. He, he does have a crown built into his armour, unlike my king with his plume. Uh, we'll see how the Castilian king gets on in melee against the Portuguese king. They're actually on the same flank as one another, so we might see them cross swords. Uh, and then we have some Spanish Order Knights riding with him, which obviously very, very strong Spanish cavalry. They look pretty fantastic as well. So sort of the Knights of Santiago riding in formation here. Uh, and again, this is going to give Spain a little bit of a cab advantage over myself. Uh, but Attila battles do tend to be a little bit quicker uh, than, uh, than Medieval 2 ones. So let's get cracking here. Just obviously having a look at the formation, I was a, I was very eager to sort of try and use a little bit of a terrain advantage here. Obviously over here in particular where he's obviously going to try and wrap up my lines with his cab. So I was trying to use the hill over here to potentially use my dismounted Portuguese nobles to help out over there. Uh, but my front line of spearmen should hold. Uh, the problem that I have is I'm not sure how many of his infantrymen are going to be committed to the front line. If he commits a bunch of his uh, Spanish foot knights and his dismounted cavaleros as well. It could be a pretty rough time for my spearmen, even with the backup of all these halberdiers. He's got a lot of aggressive infantry, and combined with those pikemen, uh, it's a pretty nasty looking aggressive army, to be honest with you. So I'm going to have my work cut out to hold my flanks, you know, and also my dismounted Portuguese nobles are a little bit outnumbered, even in terms of the sort of the poleaxe type weaponry. So even in that respect, I'm not going to have an advantage, which is something I was rather hoping I would have in my favour, but Spain have certainly gone for a... Uh, very pointed composition here. Now fortunately he is just going to advance directly into my archers. I'm going to start firing on his halberds as they move forwards. Obviously any kills that I get on the approach is just a bit of a bonus. I never really intended for the archers to be anything else. Now unfortunately for me uh, my archers, they are actually drawing the, the fire of those crossbows as well so that's good for me. But my archers, I was hoping that Spain would have a little bit more of a defensive mindset for their infantry in mind and they would just be aggressive with their cab but with this composition that is certainly not going to be the case and now the halberds are going to be advancing in formation directly into my spears again not a crunching charge as you would expect perhaps from a pole arm unit uh, but the spears I did manage to get them into formation as well and now I'm going to be pushing up my halberds to back them up and honestly with the numbers I have I should still win in melee but the real problem I have is going to be on the flanks that cavalry fight is going to be pretty brutal for me uh, if I can win just one of the cab fights that will be significantly better for me uh, but over here the pikes and halberds are going to need a little bit more help to get through this line obviously my halberds are backed up by spears you can see over here as well more pikes coming in arrows flying past Not exactly high octane when it comes to pikes. My spear's not even flinching at the sight of that. But you can see now that this is the real problem. He's got so many dismounted caballeros and foot knights moving forwards. I don't really have any option but to charge my Portuguese nobles in and try and get some damage done to them in the sides with my archers and my crossbows and my slingers, actually. Because uh, over here, it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty brutal fight for me. I'm completely outnumbered and outgunned in this fight. Uh, but this is also, he's committing all of his units and he's charging into the back of his own men, so it's not as efficient as it could be. And this is also going to make it a little bit more awkward for him to pull out of this fight and support in the cab engagement over here, which is of course going to happen presently. A charge between the Portuguese nobles and the Spanish Order Knights. Obviously two very heavily armoured cavalry units, but ultimately, again, in terms of quality, the slight advantage does rest with my opponent and you can see actually over here that he's going after my king with some units he pulled out of the fight with the Portuguese nobles uh, but my king evades them and he does find a gap and I'm now going to be able to charge into his crossbow man so a nice downhill charge the lance just absolutely mowing down the initial units in this unit of Pardis crossbows so that's going to be nice for me I'm just going to put it into slow motion obviously this is risky because uh, losing the general in Attila or 1212 is 
can be pretty crippling for your army, even with a lot of elite units like both armies have on display here. Uh, unfortunately for me, you can see my municipal archers are sort of moving through the enemy lines. Again, the pathfinding, this is some of the weirdness, which I'm not really a huge fan of, if I'm honest. The fact that, you know, units will just sort of walk right through the pikes instead of getting kind of stuck on them, like they do in Medieval 2, which has its own downsides. They just sort of phase through the enemy unit and just get ripped, ripped apart um, while down here. I'm also not a fan of how the battle st sounds stop when you put it into slow motion. It's a real pain. Uh, you can see here that the pikemen are actually winning this conflict here in the middle. The additional range they're provided, doing well against the halberdiers and the spearmen actually just in behind. However, you can also see over here that I have begun the process of attacking these units in the side. So I've got my Portuguese nobles trying to wrap up the line, but also the cab fight down here has also just got underway. Two sets of cavalry clattering into one another, the caballeros who do not have a significant advantage over my, uh, over my Portuguese nobles over here, so I'm feeling a little bit better about this engagement. I've also got these Portuguese nobles over here who are going to be able to rear charge these caballeros who were ripping this Portuguese cavalry apart, but now with this additional support from my uh, stronger cavalry, that shouldn't be the case any longer. And again, more Portuguese nobles again charging right into the back of this engagement over here. Dismounted Portuguese nobles offering their support. Crossbows up on the hill. So I'm actually winning this cav engagement down here because he's he's sort of... He definitely front-loaded on this side with a ton of these uh, sort of foot pole arm units and all of his best cavalry over on this side. So it's clear that he wants to get over this side and then go down the hill, uh, which in terms of terrain certainly makes sense, but that is surrendering the cav fight to me down there. If he had evenly split his cav, I don't think I would have won either cav fight. Even with the support of my infantry down there, he could have just peeled off some halberds to equalize that. My melee cav certainly wouldn't have stood much of a chance. Um, well, back up to one speed, the municipal archers are going to be shooting into the Spanish Order Knights, but the amount of damage they're going to do is very, very limited. You know, the the damage archers can do is just, it, it's pretty weedy, pretty weak. But over here you can see obviously it can be a little difficult to tell these units apart as well because obviously they've got very similar styles. A combination here of the Spanish Order Foot Knights going into the back of my line. So certainly at the top of the hill over here I'm losing this fight. You can see my King's Bodyguard very riskily charging into the back of these pikes and all of these Spanish Order Foot Knights on foot and some dismounted caballero, so I do need to get my king out of there, otherwise he's likely to get ripped apart. But the last of my resistance up here has been destroyed, so all of those po Spanish pole arms are going to be coming down the hill. Uh, all of that Spanish cavalry, again, I'm a little bit surprised that he didn't actually split his cavalry up. He's, he kept them in one big blob, but he wasn't able to finish off my crossbows quickly enough. If he had split his cavalry up, it would have been a very different story. Uh, and you can see that over here, his, his cavalry is still hanging on. If he finishes his engagements up the hill quickly, he can finish off my army with relative ease, uh, but as it is, the longer he delays with taking decisive action, the more of a chance I, I stand. And you can see I'm starting to wrap up the line over here, just like he's doing on this side. So basically we've won each on one flank. And I'm going to be wrapping up the hill, he's going to be coming down the hill, uh, and he has got obviously some very strong cavalry still alive. So you could still say that the uh, advantage is still in my opponent's favour. Perhaps the uh, the good thing that I have going for me is I have this free unit of dismounted Portuguese nobles which I can commit where needed. Uh, whereas he has thrown all of his infantry in over here, hoping perhaps to break my infantry quickly. Uh, but he has also got less utility units as a result of that. I'm also pulling out my halberdiers so that I can fully surround this section down here, kill off those Parvis crossbows, finish off some of the Monteros down here as well. I've also got these spears which I'm reforming as well. going to try and sort of zone out his cav. But I have one down here, and I'm now going to be able to scatter to the four winds with my Portuguese nobles. I've also got my crossbows coming up the field as well, so I do still have a ranged unit, whereas my opponent does not. He does have a unit of crossbows, but they were in melee, uh, and they are now going to get poked to death by halberdiers, so that's unfortunate for my opponent. He has lost his ability to try and harass my cab at range, whereas I still have an option for doing that. Now, I do have a unit of my dismounted Portuguese nobles, which charged up here, uh, they are obviously getting ripped apart with impunity, uh, but once again my opponent blobbed up very heavily on a singular unit, allowing me to sort out the rest of my army. Here we can see some spearmen holding the line still as more of the Spanish pikemen come down the hill. A nice crossbow volley there, trying to get as many kills as I can. Bit of carnage here, you can definitely see where the line was. 
uh, but it is rapidly turning into a bit of a brawl. But also, you can see that now the Spanish infantry that I'm surrounding, while the uh, the Spanish Order foot knights were dithering at the top of the hill there, has allowed me to start breaking off some of the Spanish infantry. Uh, now we can see the uh, another cab engagement. Portuguese nobles again charging uphill into the Spanish Order knights, which is that's a rough engagement to take. And now the Spanish king is also coming in, but he's looking rough. Losing their king could be all it takes. Once again, you can see a hefty blob of the Caballeros and the Spanish Order Foot Knights, but one, one unit of spearmen is able to hold them in place for the time being. And as long as I can keep them away from that cav engagement, I'm feeling pretty good. I have lost another unit of shock cavalry, however, so it's unfortunate for me. I do still have my king's bodyguard, which is, you know, still got more than half of the unit, just and I can use them to try and charge into the back of these infantrymen and break them off, because if I can sort of win the infantry fight convincingly and I have a bunch of spears and pole arms left, there's going to be nothing that the Spanish Cav can do, and they're already wavering actually. The crossbow able to affect the fight just enough to tilt it in my favour. Spanish Order Knights able to win easily against the Portuguese nobles on the other flank before, but this time with the addition of those crossbow fire, even a hill advantage, not enough. And there you can see another routing unit of dismounted caballeros charged by my king. The Spanish king actually routing off. Shameful, leaving his men. And I think that might be him, actually. Indeed it is. You can see his crown, and he is running for the hills. The sight of their king abandoning them on the field could be all that it takes to route this entire army off. Uh, two units of shock cavalry, and you can see that a lot of my units are wavering as well. And there's still a lot of Spaniards trying to zone my cavalry out, but again, the crossbows, the fact that I have that skirmish force still here, seemingly is going to be enough to do enough morale damage, but again, my infantry is also starting to lose stomach for the fight. Spanish Order Foot Knights are leaving. My halberds having to sort of fight with the Monteros, which are obviously two very similar units. Again, the Spanish Order Foot Knights engaging here. I'm going to try and charge them with my now pretty depleted king. And again, the lances come out. Not too much damage, but the morale damage, honestly, in Attila is perhaps just as important as the physical damage you do. My spears did return from routing, and they are now going to try and bail out my crossbowmen against the Spanish Order Foot Knights, which is definitely good for me. Uh, meanwhile, the dismounted Caballeros are looking like wavering, fighting my dismounted Caballeros. There goes my general, though, falling from his horse and being killed. A brave charge to save his men on foot. And ultimately, he stuck around on the field, whereas the Spanish king ran with his tail between his legs. Uh, but it does look as though that might be the difference here, because so, slowly but surely I'm pulling ahead. I'm going to win the cab fight, which uh, took me by surprise. The crossbows definitely made a big impact on the initial engagement there, because it's definitely sent some of the uh, Castilian cavalry running for the hills. The pikes have been, honestly, a good pick from Castile throughout this fight, um, but they also... You know, they're obviously not going to get the most kills the most quickly. Uh, and as time has gone on, when it changed from being a line fight to being a brawl, uh, the Castilian infantry started to uh, started to fall behind. Obviously the halberdiers and the dismounted Portuguese nobles proving themselves very nicely. Again, I feel as though, you know, I feel as though looking back on this, my opponent probably blobbed up a little bit too much. His cavalry, all the cavalry quality was up here, which won initially. Uh, but mainly the infantry support they had went into big blobs and engaged singular units of mine, uh, which ultimately were not too important to my cause. It was really just me trying to wrap up the line as best I could, which I ended up being able to do. And I ended up winning both the infantry and the cavalry fight in the late game, thanks mainly to morale, it must be said. Uh, you know, the morale of Attila is certainly an important mechanic to consider. Uh, and just having a look at what got the kills for both sides, and also the fact that early on, uh, what ended up being quite an important decision was me not sending my king into that cab engagement at the top. If I did, I would have lost my general very early and it would have been a terrible mistake. The rest of my army would have suffered in terms of morale from that. Uh, but I didn't. I slipped in behind the enemy lines. I charged into the crossbows, which caused my opponent actually to send the crossbows into melee just to sort of give them the cover of the halberds and the pikes. Uh, and then my king was just able to sort of charge in where it was safe uh, and rack up a lot of kills, whereas my opponent just sort of sent his cav in blobs, uh, which at the top worked, but at the bottom certainly didn't. Having a look at my infantry, obviously my dismounted Portuguese nobles, the two that were at the top got destroyed. Uh, the other two, however, that helped wrap up the line did significantly better, because obviously you know, they may not look like a lot of kills, uh, but they were in melee against the Monteros, the late period 
Spanish Halberdier, which is certainly not a low tier unit, so those are high quality kills they got. Uh, my Spearmen obviously didn't get too many kills, you know, relatively speaking, next to the other other infantry on the field they would have been cheaper, other than maybe the Spanish Pikemen. Uh, but I never really expected them to get much kills, they were just there to hold the line and make sure the Spanish cavalry couldn't just ride me down from the front. Uh, I had three units across from one actually, so I missed one. Uh, but, you know, again, not a lot of kills, but the morale damage they did turned out to be extremely important. My melee calf got wrecked. My halberds, very mixed bag, depending on where they were on the line. You can see where the uh, the halberds that were at the top of the hill uh, were, because they got destroyed, whereas the ones at the bottom did significantly better. Uh, and again, cavalry, very mixed bag. You can see the two down here that were at the bottom of the hill with the support of my crossbows and my Portuguese dismounted nobles. Uh, the ones at the top, meanwhile, that did not have that luxury got destroyed by the Spanish Order Knights. Speaking of which, the most kills for my opponent went to one of those Spanish Order Knights, obviously riding down my Portuguese nobles and then doing a lot of damage to my skirmishers. Again, I had the slightly bigger army, not by a huge margin, but still that, especially when you consider that a lot of that came down to my municipal archers and my levy slingers, which certainly weren't very important units. Uh, the Caballeros did okay, but certainly the Spanish Order Knights showing their quality. The Foot Knights as well, showing a lot of quality, probably the highest amount of kills on a single infantry unit on the field. Uh, just about was 92 from a dismounted caballero, um, whereas obviously over here for me it was a just a standard halberdier. Uh, actually, the Spanish Order Foot Knights 96. I'm blind, so again, good use of the uh, pole arm units here. Uh, but there weren't any. It was it was a very focused Castilian army. It was always going to be a matter of aggression, uh, and it could have worked. You know, again, if if my opponent had just split off one of his cavalry units to start charging into more vulnerable things rather than keeping them in a blob, I feel as though Castile would have won this. But in the end, thanks to my opponent keeping most of his really effective infantry and cavalry blobbed up in one place. Uh, I was able to focus down the rest of his army and ultimately, you know, eventually the numbers told and pretty much all of my infantry was good against cavalry as well. Spears, halberds, pole axes and long swords and the like. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, Attila is something that I'm still very much getting used to, both from a sort of commentating and sort of camera control perspective. Uh, but even so, you know, it, it might be the sort of thing that we, that we see now and then. 12-12 uh, is still very much a work in progress, and there isn't a huge amount of balance, if I'm being honest. I mean, you know, variety as well. A lot of the units will have fantastic looking unit models and look different, but ultimately a lot of them will be functionally very similar. Um, you know, so it is something which can be used for the spectacle, uh, but there isn't much that I can talk about mechanically that will differentiate a lot of these factions between one another. Like, again, Castile just have, you know, outright better cavalry than Portugal in this case. Uh, but Portugal also have a few other options, like obviously a lot more dismounted Portuguese nobles can be brought, that sort of thing. I don't know if Spain have got any sort of easy to bring late period spears, but they ended up being a pretty good buy. Stuff like that, like Portugal have only got one archer available to them at the moment. It, it's definitely a work in progress. It's been in development for a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's the sort of thing, it, we might be seeing a little bit more of it, but it won't disrupt any reforged content at all. It will just be sort of an additional thing uh, as and when I decide to play it. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this. And I hope you'll join me for whatever is next, which I'm not sure what I will be doing next. I mean, I assume that this will be out before the new year, uh, in which case the next battle could be Helm's Deep. We'll see. <laughs>